This video was made in partnership with Texas Instruments. Hello, I'm here at CES 2024 with Mark. Nice to meet everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Ng, and I'm the general manager for HEV and EV, as well as body and lighting applications inside of TI. I'm curious, what are we looking at right now? Here on this wall at CES, we have basically all of our HEV and EV applications. This is an onboard charger, as well as the DC to DC converter. So it's what we call a combo box. It's a state-of-the-art 400 volt, 11 kilowatt system, which gets really close to the three kilowatt per liter density metric and as you can see here there's boards that are stacked in here and everything is really packed tightly with a lot of magnetics and a lot of semiconductor content here yeah thank you so much that's such an interesting technology and how you're able to pack it all in such a small space and what do we have down here below this is our latest uh, reference design which is completely done by texas instruments in, in conjunction with our partner wolf speed so what you see here similar to above is basically a complete ti silicon ranging from the microcontroller which is controlling a traction inverter we have our gate drivers, which are controlling and driving the silicon carbide modules provided by Wolfspeed on the bottom. And essentially what we take here is an 800 volt bus provided by your OBC or DC to DC converter. And we provide like a three phase AC waveform, which is essentially used to drive an electric motor. We do everything ranging from FOC control to safe drive of the silicon carbide modules to position sensing and everything that you would have in a traction inverter. And both of these systems have a silicon carbide inverter, correct? Well, they both have silicon carbide MOSFETs, correct. So yeah, they're using basically wide band gap material to basically take the advantage of efficiency as well as small size and high frequency. And a lot of electric vehicles are going towards a higher voltage architecture, like 800 volts, like this would be used for an 800 volt vehicle, right? What are some of the concerns that automakers have about an 800 volt architecture? There's a lot of performance benefits, right? So the pros are basically you have better performance, you have better, uh, faster charging, but along the way you have a higher voltage system, which means that your safety demands are much higher. So the the spacing requirements, as you can see here, the components are well spaced apart. The devices have quite big clearance and creepage, the ones at least on the high voltage side. As far as safety goes, the devices that we create have to have the diagnostics, the redundancy available. If you're talking about like microcontrollers that we have, we have to have, you know, AutoSAR and, and lockstep cores that are running in parallel with each other and, and continu continuously checking. So just to meet this type of functional safety requirement is it requires a specific development flow for our cell semiconductors. It requires specific redundancy, diagnostics, checking, as well as like software that we need to write. Yeah, one of the big challenges that I know of in a high voltage systems is you have a voltage gradient that can allow things like creep to happen as the vehicle is in operation. What are some of the diagnostics that this system has to protect against those kinds of failure modes? In general, high voltage creep, you can see there's extra spacing on this board. In addition, we have creepage and clearance that we provide in our pack. Other areas, we continuously monitor the high voltages. We do isolation checks. We do various other diagnostics that we can run in the system to make sure that, that you don't have that kind of breakdown in your system. That is so important. Thank you so much, Mark, for giving us the rundown on these two really advanced technologies.